have some charges because of our home. What is this? Anaerobic jar. Well, what's the environment inside? It is anaerobic. We did not hand you these organisms, but what organisms would grow in this? Clostridium species. Clostridium. Clostridium is one of your two what? Spore worms. Clostridium, what's the other one? Bacillus. 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 I'm not walking to avoid being recorded. I'm walking so I can include the whole class and half of everybody's over here. Okay? Now, you can help identify organisms by where the spore is. You can record it, so I call it. The spore can be central, subterminal, or it can be terminal. What well, central means center. Subterminal means close to the end. Terminal means on the end. If you've had organisms that grow up here that have to be clustered, Two of the clostridiums that have subterminal spores are Clostridium perfringens and Clostridium botulinum. Now, what does perfringens cause? What's the major thing I'm giving you? Though? Yes, it can do food poison, but what's the one I'm major having you emphasize? Gangrene. Gangrene. Botulinum is definitely botulism, food poisoning. Food poisoning. So if you see little teeny rods, with subterminal spores, you can pick up that they're anaerobes on the question. You can't tell them apart unless you have a what hint? Unless I give you a disease hint. Because they're both subterminals. One clostridium is unique enough that as soon as you see it with a spore, you should know what it is. It has a rod with a baseball stuck on the end. Who is that? Tetanus. Clostridium tetanum. Only technon can be called different things, but it has the rod, the spore, and the very end. Okay. Now, Bacillus anthracis, moving to aerobic facultative anaerobe, that has spore when it is anthrax, centrally located. Central. Now, remember your Bacillus anthracis, what the slides we have, look like bacilli and chains, but to you they look like polyfilaments. But Bacillus can be separate. Body sources, no, you know, left to right, right to left. If I ask you if a person has pneumonia, what would be the body source? It would be lung mucus sputum, right? If a person has Clostridium difficile, that's massive diarrhea, the body sample that you would be testing or the lab would be testing would be feces or stools. Now, if a person has a wound infection in the synovial region, and you look at that and you see clusters of purple cocci. First, synovial region means joint wounds, like knees, etc. But if you see purple cocci in clusters, what are you looking at? Staphylococcus. Possibly Staphylococcus aureus. Does that make sense? Match. Now, don't tell me, please. Don't tell me that stevia comes from stevia's lungs. Please don't tell me that, oh, that pneumonia comes from feces. All right? So please just sort of, it helps out. It helps with identification, it helps with hints on the test card. Because unless you can see it, or I think you can see it straight from the slide, there will be some sort of hint on the test card. Okay, here we go, pause. Two by two by two by two by two. What would that probably be? Nicerian gonorrhea. Nicerian gonorrhea. That's not the same thing as the Niceria what was on the chocolate otter plate, right? That's non pathogenic Niceria. Non pathogenic. Because Niceria gonorrhea has fibrae that have receptors that only match the receptors on the reproductive cells. They have reproductive cells in your throat. Okay. Camel jar. And yes, we also see the signal jar. Camel jar.
Star is what type of environment? Black or green? What does that mean? Reduce levels of oxygen, but still trace levels of oxygen. What did anaerobic mean? No oxygen. In this, you can grow two organisms that came out of your throat, because the back of your throat has a higher CO2 level, right? Okay, one where the streptococci is species, because you had the blood on your plate. The blood on your plate, if it was streptococci, then picked up the crystal violet, and they were blue, blue, blue. The other one was the chocolate otter plate. And what were you, already told you, what did you detect on an oxidase test on the chocolate otter plate? Non pathogenic Nyceria gonorrhea. Well, no, it can't be non pathogenic Nyceria gonorrhea. Non pathogenic Nyceria. Non pathogenic Nyceria. That's the one that would be on the chocolate otter. Nyceria gonorrhea is always a pathogen. Okay, I'll say it one more time. Nyceria gonorrhea pathogen. Never had, never touched it in this lab. Non pathogenic Nyceria species on the chops it off. Okay, be sure I clarify that because I'm probably talking to myself. Now, calculations on a dilution series and how to pick a chemical plate, I'm going to do that on the board. I'm going to show you through a bunch of the review sheets. I'm going to show you some pictures of things that were way back at the beginning of the lab that you may have forgotten. And then I'm going to switch to the board.